Hi everyone, this is the fourth and final uh, episode devoted to the evolution of medical treatments, part four. But coming back to the topic of finasteride, right? Because I think the, the key is to, to understand, well, the effectiveness. When people talk about, well, when people talk about swapping to topical uh, as, a, as a means to minimize side effects, but what about looking at its efficacy in terms of, you know, managing hair loss when you compare topical finasteride to placebo to oral finasteride? Okay, right? so a recent study had a look at this very th the very thing and they found that, uh, that the 0.25% topical finasteride yeah. uh, in outcomes was the equivalent to taking a milligram orally. Yeah. Right, with way with, with less side effects. Yes. It wasn't it wasn't a hundredth of the side effects. It was about half the side effects of people taking it orally. Yeah. Um, but it, it, but basically it it this is what the recent research showed that you you can use this dose get an equivalent result. Now to be fair, and this is something a bit beyond the audience, uh, you know, diving into deep. Yeah. But most of the studies report results at twenty four weeks. And this is a bit of a problem for us mm -hmm. because we know that the hair cycle is a multi-year hair cycle. So even though it's easier to do a research project in 24 weeks than it is to do it for 48 weeks or 98 weeks, the reality is if everything's being reported in a six-month time frame, you're only going to get what you might expect at six months. So, for example, with the topical finasteride trial that I'm talking about, at six months it had increased, and the oral, it increased the number of hairs but not the thickness of the hairs. Mm. And yet we know from our own experience that our patients get less happening in the first six months than they get happening in the second and the third six months. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, I think, I think, is that you get a little bit of increase in numbers in the first six months in these situations and then the width of the hair starts to improve. So your weaker hair becomes a stronger hair and that's when you get the volume effect that really bounces in. So even in the original trials of uh, finasteride orally, the two-year results would, in terms of good would double the results of one year and people need to think about this in that time zone and it kind of leveled off at the two-year mark. So. You know, if you're going to if you're going to use the medicine and you're going to really see whether it's going to be effective for you, and it's and you're the appropriate patient, by the way, mm. for it, not the shiny bald patient, yes. but the patient who's got some thinning hair. If you're not prepared to do it for twelve months, you're never going to know. And we have so many patients who come to us say, oh, "I tried that, didn't work. How long did you take it for? Three months? Well, it was never ever going to work in three yes. months, you know. And the and and some of the ads for like. Uh, minoxidil, topical minoxidil were ridiculous. You know, shiny <laughs> shiny bald people suddenly became hairy yes. people. And even on Instagram now you see these ridiculous yes. results that claim to happen in weeks. They can't possibly happen in that time frame. So you, you know, this comes back to compliance. Yes. What are you prepared to do? If you're prepared to do it for a year, then our job is to find the way that you will start it for a year. Yes. Whether it's topical or oral, whether it's intermittent oral, whether it's daily topical yep. or second daily topical, the job is to find the sweet spot for the patient that allow them to happily use it for that 12 months. And I think, I think that's really, really important. And also to really to highlight that th that is fundamentally what you should be trying to measure and monitor because that is the outcome. Because we can say that, okay, look, 0.25 finasteride, you know, is, is, is uh, equivalent as, uh, as taking one milligram uh, of oral medication. And that's great. We can talk about the re reduction in side effects. That's also great. And there will be people going, right, well, what other markers can we, can we measure? And I'm, I'm going to draw something, and we've talked about this before as well, to, to highlight this point that all data is not necessarily useful because if we look at plasma DHT levels, right, okay, so if we look at plasma DHT levels with, a, with an increasing uh, dose, we know that, you know, placebo doesn't do very much to, to the uh, plasma uh, DHT levels. We know um, that taking a topical uh, finasteride will um, will drop the, the DHT. We know that taking an oral finasteride, okay? Deutasteride. Oral, right, yes. oral finasteride yes. will drop it even more. Yeah. Okay, so based on that data, you would say, well, oral finasteride far more effective, but we're saying, well, actually, that's looking at plasma DHT, which is not the metric that you should be measuring. So 
Monitoring it this way is not is not important. It's not the, the be all and end all. Saying that topical finasteride is far better is not, you no. can't make that blanket statement. No. It's looking at what is the outcome that you're looking at achieving and what is the method that you're willing, as you said, what you're willing to do to get there. Well, here's the interesting thing. But if we, if, we, if we look at this recent study that, that analyzed over a number of studies as to the topical yeah. versus oral, yeah. and at six months, the results were pretty much identical. Yeah. Right? So there was no benefit in that first six months yes. by lowering the DHT even more because presumably you just need a certain amount of scalp and a bit of serum uh, mm -hmm. to, to get for most patients. Now, it's not true for every patient, but this is over a pretty big trial yeah. uh, and it showed that, that, that the oral people were only doing as well as the topical people with much, much less going into the system. So the plus is there's less going in your system. If that yes. makes you feel comfortable and makes you want to use it, great. Because, because it's not... there are some people who do feel strongly about that. Correct. Okay. And so if that's what you want to do, that's great. We can tell you that it's likely that you're going to have the yeah. same result. But because there's so much less going into your system, if that makes you feel better. And that's important because they need to believe they're not going to suffer the result yes. of side effects. Because if they believe they're going to get side effects, they will. This is what the placebo arm always tells us, yes. right? If the placebo... Um, sexual side effects uh, are the same as the ones using the drug. It's yes. because people have psyched themselves Correct. into believing. And we see that so often. We see that all the time. So you've got to find. So the pluses here is if you feel more comfortable to do it, you're likely to do it. Mm -hmm. The negative side of it is applying something topically to the scalp. A lot of patients just find tricky. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if they, if they give up because they just go, oh, it's just like I don't really like doing it, it's too hard, then there's no compliance. Also, right? not every topical finasteride is created equally. <clears throat> Correct. So we have this problem. So, so if, But we can also make life easy for the patients by combining, for example, topical minoxidil and topical finasteride into one product. Mm. Again, doesn't exist, has to be made. Mm. But if you use a 5% minoxidil and you use really low dose topical finasteride and you're prepared to have it compounded and use it and then you have to use it once a day because minoxidil does not have to mm -hmm. be used twice a day. If that is going to be something that you know, that makes you do it for a longer period of time, that's the right combo for you. And then you have also, I mean, just to, as, a, as a, another point into the mix, you have to look at the long uh, term cost associated with this, yeah. right? Because as you said, it's no point treating it for three months. There's no point treating it for six months. You have to be looking at being on treatment for a long period of time. And, and, and topical compounded products are more expensive than the, yeah. than the, than so the ones you can buy yeah. um, at, the, at the normal drugstore. So again, it, it comes down to this idea of thinking about, you know, what, what you're prepared to do. Yeah. And you know, there is an opportunity cost, but there's a financial cost as well. Sure. Uh, I'm going to look at our, uh, yeah. our list because well, I want to make sure that, that we, we want to we talk about it. We're talking about different ways of, uh, of putting the medicine in. Just, I will say out loud, the jutasteride as a topical solution mm. is not a good outcome because it's a very big molecule. Yes. It poorly absorbs through the skin. So if people are going to use it, they either microneedle it in yeah. or they inject it, yeah. which means doing it at the clinic. Very painful um, as well. Yeah, uh, quite painful, uh, like PRP. Yeah. So if you're injecting jutasteride, you might only need to do it every three months. If you're microneedling it, you're still going to maybe do it once or twice a week because yeah. it has a long half-life. Uh, but, but that's the only way you're going to get in. So if you so if you see topical solutions of jutasteride with no um, uh, advice to actually microneedle it or yes. inject it, then you then then forget it because you're yes. just, you're so not topical, going, not going yeah, to get a response. Yeah, topical uh, jutasteride, the molecular size is just, just too, too big, big to be able to get through the on its own to be able to get through the, the channels on the, right. on the skin. So I mean I know this is a complicated picture for, <laughs> for you uh, but luckily it's recorded you can uh, you can uh, have a look at it whenever you like but I think it's important to understand if we're going to summarize now the evolution of treatments is partly based on more scientific evidence about equivalence between using topical versus mm. oral but also partly on trends of what patients are prepared to do. Mm. Right, so you know, uh, I, I don't expect the companies uh, to come to the uh, you know, to the party and start funding massive trials on topical finasteride or injectable jutasteride or even oral minoxidil for hair loss. That's not going to be something that comes out of a large scale, and they aren't going to become approved. Yes, they're going to remain off label. But I just want to reassure you that even the off label use of these products is, generally speaking 
an acceptable alternative if the person who's doing the prescribing for you knows enough about it. Correct. And yes. that's the thing. They need to know enough about the normal chemistry of the drug and how it's distributed and what we're trying to do. Because if you're going to go off-label, you need to be an expert. Yes. I mean, it, 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 uh, it sort of leads to the question when, you, when you're with... When you're dealing with companies that do sort of uh, online, you know, drop shipping with all of these with these products, you know, how much due diligence has been done to see if it's appropriate for that for that individual? See, that's a, that is a big topic because it's an increasing number of why young men um, uh, do it. I mean, since telehealth became such a big yeah. thing in the world with uh, you know modern ha- uh, smartphones. Um, I've got patients that live three blocks away who won't come and see me. They'd rather have a FaceTime or, or, or have a, a WhatsApp or have a Zoom because of the hassle of actually coming and taking the time to see me. Mm. Um, and so when you go back one step further from that, there are people that will never see you because they go to these online yes. uh, you know, pharmacies and uh, they send in you know, like a questionnaire with maybe 10 questions on it, a couple of photos, and there's a doctor sitting there. Yeah, yes, there's a doctor sitting there. I've dealt with one of these companies. Yes. I know what they do. The doctor sits there and he gets paid X dollars per every time he does it. That's the average time they spend on it is two minutes. Mm. Two minutes. So they scan through the questions, look at the first say, yep, we have three options here, option one for you, option two for you. So there's no customization to any great degree here. There's no actual contact with the patient except by email. And then you wait, you know, so there's no counselling, right? Because if you're doing a two-minute prescription, how do you counsel a patient about the pluses and minuses of doing this yes. or doing that? It just, it just doesn't exist. And so I can understand the attraction of it, but I think that the risk of doing it, the problem is that if you get a problem from it, right, yeah. it can skew the whole picture because now you're saying, oh, that drug's terrible, this is what it did to me, but it may have been inappropriate what you were yes. doing. So I think that... That as a really highlights the importance of a, a proper consultation where you're assessed and you're talked through what the options are Correct. For, for you as and an if you, individual. You know, and you need to talk to somebody um, who, who knows what they're doing mm-hmm. and have the conversation and ask the questions and don't and don't think, oh well, this is so easy. They send me the they ship me the box every month and it's got all yes. the meds in it. I get the attraction of that, but you haven't been properly assessed, in my opinion. Yes. Well, that's a, a really big dive, one of the <laughs> longest videos that we've done. But I, I hope that you know you found that useful because we've tried to navigate and give you a, a lot of uh, both in-depth and more high-level information on the landscape uh, with regards to you know medical therapy, but specifically finasteride and, and minoxidil. So uh, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you've sort of made your way through this uh, video, but come, come back and watch it again if you, if you uh, have further questions or leave comments in the comment section. We'll try and get to those. But thank you for watching. And thanks for your patience.